Hi, y'all, Liz here. And I know that a lot of our cleaning business owners are struggling with their employees in a few different ways. So I wanted to create this video. Actually, Maria Dorian asked me to create this video to help you guys with some messaging for your employees. Uh, I'm also going to make a few uh, GEV, daily engagement videos, for you to play for your employees. Uh, I'll probably be making those tomorrow, uh, but for now, I just wanted to get this messaging out. All right, so the first thing is stay in contact with your employees and um, talk to them about what they're doing well, what you're doing, how, how this whole thing is playing out, Treat them like they are, I'm not going to say exactly business partners, but like they're in this business with you so that they feel like they're in this thing with you. So one of the best engagement tools that there is out there is to have a, a problem and overcome the problem together. A lot of businesses will actually create problems that they can then engage their employees with and then overcome that problem together because it's a bonding exercise. It's why a lot of the, um, like a lot of the uh, programs where you're going to have engagement and you're trying to create engagement in your company, they'll come in and they'll do all of these exercises where there's something really hard to do and you have to do it together and then yay, we're all better together. And uh, it sounds ridiculous, but the reason it, 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 uh, people do it is because it actually works. So take advantage of that. So talk with them about the problem. And that, that was the key that I just said. Talk with them about the problem. Don't talk to them about the problem. Talk with them about what's going on. And here's what we're doing on this side. What are you guys doing? What are you guys thinking about? Is there anything else that we should be doing that we haven't thought about? So talk with your people instead of at them and then do it regularly don't do don't just have one one thing that, that you say to them and then that's it you already told them everything so why do you have to continue talking to them you know again do it with them have them be part of the process with you have them help you brainstorm and figure out what we're going to do next okay uh, customers are skipping, customers are going on hold, um, customers are, some are canceling, some are immune compromised, right? So they can't have you in their houses. Uh, so talk with your employees about that. What are we going to do, you guys? Do you have any ideas? What else can we do? Are there other um, avenues for us? All right, so the first thing is talk with your employees about what's going on. The second thing is talk with them a lot. Keep, keep in contact with them, not just one conversation, okay? So um, talk with them, keep in contact with them, keep talking to them, uh, um, keep talking with them, and actually to them too, somewhat, right? But more with, but keep talking with them about what's going on and uh, where, where you guys are and what you're thinking is. Why? Because things are changing every day, right? Every day. And especially on Mondays, you go home on Friday, most of you, and then you come back to work on Monday and poof, everything has blown up. Okay, so that's okay. It doesn't have to be scary. It just means we're working on a faster timeline right now. So talk with your people, talk with them consistently. And then third thing is show them how they are part of the solution. Help them to see what is great about what they're doing. Uh, okay, and so some of you are going to be thinking, oh, but they're scared. Shouldn't I be hitting that fear thing first? Uh -uh. So first show them how great everything is for them. Get them thinking in the positive. What's, what's great? How can I be helpful? What are they doing? So some things that you can point out for them is how uh, some of the areas that you're cleaning for, especially if we're going to have to hibernate, <laughs> that word better, is we want to keep clean people's home environments so that when they do hibernate, that they're not sitting in nasty juices. Doesn't that sound worse, saying nasty juices? <laughs> Absolutely does. All right, but we want to clean their environment. 
so that they are in a nice, safe, clean environment if they're going to be hibernating. Okay, uh, the second thing is people are getting sick. A lot of people are getting sick. That's just the reality of the situation right now. But some of the people that aren't getting sick are young people, are your employees. And so I'm, I sort of got off track there a little bit. I wanted to say one more point before I transitioned into hitting their fears. I wanted to say one more thing about how to make them feel good about what they're doing. So going in and helping people in their environments, especially if they're gonna be hibernating and making sure that their space is clean, but also you're helping to make the space clean for the family, for the entire family, especially for anybody that has to leave. A medical professional, it's a really big deal. First responders, they're out there, they're in the thick of things. They come home to their families and we don't want them spreading anything to their family. So that's another way that they can really be helpful. Also, common areas for the elderly. Um, if you clean in any retirement type environments, maybe where the people are still self-sufficient, maybe they have like their own little apartments, but there are common areas. Maybe they have clubhouses or they might have like a beauty parlor, whatever, whatever they have. Who can clean that stuff? And maybe not just clean. Maybe your message can be about you're sanitizing and disinfecting. We're doing more than just cleaning, okay? Okay, so those are the things about how they can really start to feel like, wow, we actually can make an impact and we're gonna make a, a big difference here. So that's the third thing, show them how they can make a difference. And then the fourth thing is, show them why they're the right people to be making a difference. And so this is how you overcome the fear thing, by showing them how they personally matter, that they are safe and they are the right people. So some things about that, and I wrote myself a few notes because there's so many here. Uh, so the first thing is that this is one of the safest service type jobs that there are out there. Uh, when you see anybody working at uh, fast food, right? Because fast food is still open in most places, it is here. Uh, do you see them wearing gloves? Do you see them washing their hands between every time they serve this person or that person? Do you see them doing any of those things? They're not. So we are, all right? We're automatically, our natural practices are much better than even their stepped up practices. This is what, what you see everybody else doing. This is their stepped up practice, you guys. So their stepped up practice is not as good as your company's basic practice, the things that you're already doing. Now, you're also stepping up your processes. Even if you're green, I'm pretty sure that you have added some disinfectant to your arsenal because we are in the business of fighting infection, right? That's what we do, and cleaning for health and safety. So part of what you wanna be talking to them about why they're the right people is, here's my little phrase that we're using at our company, is that we are essential services because we sanitize and disinfect for health and safety. So that's our blurb that we're using at our company. What's your blurb? Get a blurb for your company. Why is your company the right company? And your people, why are your people the right people? All right, another one on my list is, how long have you been doing this? Even if you have only been in business for one year, okay? And, um, and some of you maybe even less time than that. But for however long you've been doing this, you uh, have been cleaning surfaces exponentially longer than anybody out there that doesn't clean for a living. How many more? Just think about in one day. Even if it's your one company and it's just you and you've only been cleaning for three months, let's say and you're cleaning in one day, you're cleaning four houses, I mean two houses, and you're cleaning probably a minimum of four toilets, but for even, even numbers, let's say you're cleaning five in one day, in one week, you're cleaning 25 toilets, in one month, you're cleaning over 100 toilets, in three months, you've now cleaned 300 toilets in just three months. In three months time, how many times do you think your typical employee has cleaned a toilet? what what 
maybe 16, 20, right? So 300 times. That's how often you're, that's how much house you're cleaning. That's how much more experience you have cleaning. That's how much more practice you have cleaning. That's how much more um, access you have had to all of the different germs, pathogens, viruses. Right, so now this one is tricky. This one, when you present this, you have to say it the right way, so be careful. If you don't, you're just gonna scare you more, okay? So here's the right way, you ready? I'm gonna do it for you right here. Okay, and you guys, I want you to remember that we have always been cleaning dirty surfaces. We have always been cleaning infected surfaces. surfaces. People just didn't tell us in the past. Now they're telling us. Now we have an even better opportunity, and now we can be even more prepared. Now we absolutely should always be practicing these safe surface, safe practices, and we should always be cleaning like there is virus on every single surface that we clean. And now we're just going to be doing that more. So we're not really doing anything any different than we've ever done in the past. We just now have a little bit more forewarning about it, right? So we really are uniquely prepared to handle this because we've already been doing it for years. Now, granted, a lot of the things that were on surfaces before were not as severe as the coronavirus, but a lot of them actually were, right? Many of you will remember when AIDS was a really big deal and we didn't know how it spread. We, we were... We were confused and lost. We still have hep C. There's a lot of the hepatitis things that are out there, right? So there's a lot of stuff out there on surfaces that we've already been cleaning and doing an amazing job at and not getting sick, right? The other thing is, don't forget, you guys, we are always in our, and I said it earlier, but now I'm going to repeat it on purpose. So everybody is paying attention. I said it once, said it lightly about the, the other workers, how we're safer, right? We pull them out compared to the other people. Now we're going to come back to that again, okay? And we're going to say it again and say, and don't forget, you guys, we are wearing our personal protective equipment all day, every day. And on top of that, we're disinfecting every single thing we touch, sanitizing and disinfecting. I don't know which one your company is doing, right? Maybe you're doing both. I don't know, but use the correct term. But we are sanitizing and disinfecting everything we touch in our PPE. Where are you gonna find a safer job than this? Please. Your own home isn't as safe as the job that you are doing when you're out about. Okay, another one is um, this, oh gosh, I should have put this one on the other one. I didn't even think of it. Sorry, you guys, I have this one listed on my, on my list on a different place, but let's go back to how they can actually make a difference and how they can matter. There's one more point there. We are not only providing physical safety for people. We are providing physical safety, right? We're providing a clean environment, helping people to keep from spreading it, et cetera, et cetera. But we're also providing some emotional security. A lot of people right now are really scared. They're really nervous. They're afraid of what's happening and what could be happening for them, for their families, if they have elderly family members, they're more afraid, right? Some people are afraid for their kids, which I don't quite understand since they're not at risk. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it's hard when people are afraid. Fear is not always rational. So that, again, is one of the ways that you guys, and I'm just saying this to my employees, and this, this is another way that you guys can help to get that good message out. People don't need to be worried about their children's safety. They don't need to be worried about their children's health. They just need to keep them away from elderly people or people that are infirmed, right, that have some underlying issues. Because those are the real people that are at risk. People with underlying issues, elderly people. All right. So y'all are safe. Y'all have a unique opportunity. When this is over, you guys are going to be thinking about how you did some of this stuff. You actually fixed some things. You actually made things better for many people. You actually contributed to the health and well-being of who knows how many people, right? However many people 
you can get to see your message and hear your message. All right, so I don't know how long I have been recording here, um, but I think I've given you guys most of the message that I wanted to hand out. Keep in contact with your people and uh, give them that consistent message. Tell them how great they are and how they're uniquely qualified to do this and how they're going to be making a big impact on the world, your community, and how you guys can be the, the good guys in all of this. Look for other ways to be good guys. Oh, sorry, that was the fifth idea that I had. Look for other ways that your people can contribute. What ideas do they have? What else can they do? I know of a company that is sanitizing the, the carts at the local grocery store. I know another company, I know a bunch of companies that are doing a bunch of different things. And what is your thing? Don't take anybody else's thing. You don't need to take their thing. What's your thing? What can you do? Can you help with cars? Can you help with, um, again, some retirement homes maybe? Um, I don't know what you can do. We're starting something called our Corona Cash Pantry. Corona Cash Pantry. And uh, people can donate to it, and they can donate money, and we are putting up a pantry for our employees. Um, I'll match any money that's donated, and we're going to just start giving away food. Uh, first, the first round, everybody gets 20 bucks to buy whatever's in the store, and they're creating the list of what's in the pantry. I said store, but I should have said pantry. And we are adding to the pantry on a regular basis and they'll have opportunity to earn more Corona cash. Uh, so what can you do? How can you do something more? What can you give back? What can your people do so that they feel good about being out there? All right, that's it for today. I will again be posting some uh, daily engagement videos for your people that you can pay, play just for them, get them out there on a regular uh, basis, especially if you're nervous about getting a message out there, you're not good at it, you don't like being on video, whatever the reason is, I'll get you some daily engagement videos pretty soon. All right, that's it for now. Good luck. Talk to you soon. Bye.